Hey everybody! I know it has been quite a while since I last uploaded one of these, so feel free to tell me what you think about this one, what to improve and maybe what achievement guide you want to see next. So today we will look at the achievement The Rise of the White Sheep, and the description says as Akko Yunlu own Tabri and have Karako Yunlu not exist by 1478. Seems not too bad, right? Yeah, it can actually be quite intense. So when starting you usually have two options. The first option is more time efficient, but unfortunately also has a higher risk of you losing the war because you are smaller and weaker. The goal of the first option is that you try to find the countries that rival Karakunyulu and you try to ally them, because they will most likely be willing to join a war even if you just promise them territory because they really hate Kara. So that would be really handy. Usually these countries are the Mamluks and probably a Jam, maybe some other countries in that area. In this case, the Mamluks are your best friend, because usually they are the strongest nation that is still allowed to rival Karaka Yunlu. The process of this is simply to call in your allies on a promise of territory, but be careful to not accidentally give them the province of Tabri. Tabriz? Tabri? Uh, you, you know which one I mean. Because you actually need that province for the achievement. The advantage of this tactic is that you can start your first war really early, and thus also weaken Kara quite significantly. The disadvantage is that you are really quite dependent on your allies, especially because you are quite weak. And your allies might not be that reliable, especially the Mamluks, because, well, we know that they got someone to worry about in the north. And a gem, well, when I tried it, they <laughs> they got beaten up by the Timurids in the first couple of years and were pretty much useless afterwards, so yeah. But still, it can be really helpful, especially if you have a third country that rivals Kara. So, what's the second option? The second option is that Upon starting the game, you immediately try to go for a royal marriage with the Ottomans. Why the Ottomans and not the Mamluks? Because, well, we know that the Ottomans usually beat the Mamluks, even though the Mamluks have gotten stronger since the Cradle of Civilization DLC came out. As far as I've tried it, the Ottomans are not hostile towards you at the beginning. So you should just go for a royal marriage to keep them happy and prevent them from turning hostile in the near future. And now afterwards you can go on to improve the relations and actually go for an alliance. So, after acquiring your BFF for life, you should probably start to expand into some new countries. In my playthrough I went for Dalkadir and Trebizond, because, except for one province in Dalkadir, all of these provinces were not claimed by the Ottomans, which means that they still like me afterwards, which is really important, because you don't really want them turning hostile. And you really should try to expand before attacking Kara, because I think you can only afford between 9 and 10 troops without running at a huge deficit, and Kara can afford think around double of that, so yeah, it would look really grim if you just went against them right away. But the Ottomans don't want any land of character you know. Yes, yes I know. And that is where the RNG of this option comes into play. You see, the AI really loves to call in their allies into wars that they are guaranteed to win. So yeah, sometimes this can result in you gaining quite a lot of favors. Even if it's just a tiny insignificant war, but 
yeah, you can earn a lot of favors, which are really good, especially with the Ottomans. And yes, I know that this option is really dependent on luck and RNG, but the positive thing is that if you call in your allies like the Ottomans on favors, that lets you take as many provinces for yourself as you want. Which is really good because it makes you become even stronger while still weakening um, Karakunian loot just as much as if you would give some provinces to your allies. Especially because that could mean that you've given your allies all the provinces they desire and after what they don't want any more land, so they wouldn't join another war against them. Even though you could still technically earn some more favors if you give them some more provinces and then call them in for the next war, but yes, that would just give a lot of provinces away, which you could technically need more them than them. And yeah, having provinces for your own is just always better than giving them away. Always. So um, this is me recording the audio for this video. And I just realized that there might be a third option. You might be able to uh, combine the first and the second option by calling in one of your allies, probably the Mamluks and maybe a Jam or someone else who rivaled uh, Karaka um, by, uh, by a promise of territory into the war against Kara. And afterwards, you break the alliance with the Mamluks and try to ally the Ottomans. It might be that the Ottomans just turned hostile because you allied the Mamluks, so that might not even work. I didn't try it out, but maybe if you want to try it out, if the other two options don't really work for you, you can do that. Might work, might not. I, as I said, I didn't try it out, but maybe. So... The advantages of option 2 are that at the beginning you are getting stronger, more powerful, you get a better economy, a bigger army, which makes it easier for you to not just uh, completely depend on your allies, but also be able to maybe take a couple of fights on your own and maybe even win those, hopefully. Preferably. <laughs> but of course the disadvantage is for calling in your ally with favors that, yeah, he is. They might not call you into a insignificant war where you can actually earn a lot of favors. So yeah, that has a lot of that has a lot to do with RNG and luck. So that's not really that reliable. So yeah, after your first war against Kara. You usually are looking at at least a 15 year truce because you should try to take a 100% peace deal in your first war to weaken Kara as much as possible. If you followed option 1 with the early war against them, you should be able to start another war before 1478 to maybe annex them, but that could be really hard. Because at the beginning you are not able to annex Kara in just two wars because their total annexation cost is, I believe, 202, so really just slightly above the limit for a two war annexation, which is a shame. However, when you first attacked Kara, it is really likely that they had at least one or two allies. Maybe Mushasha or someone of those little um, Persian miners, or maybe even one of the Arabian ones. For your first war, you should try to just white piece those guys, so that you have a really short truce with them. So after your first war, you just have to wait for that really short truce. Then you can either no CB against those guys, and then call in Karaka Yinlu as a normal enemy war ally. So that way you can fight them again, weakening them even more. Sure, that would extend your truce again, but you know, at least you weaken them again, keep them weak, and also take some land so you can maybe fully annex them if you start another war. You will probably not be able to call in the Mamluks 
in a war against one of the allies of Kara because they either don't border them directly or they are just friendly toward them. So, so you might not be able to call them in, but you might be able to call in a jam or someone else who previously rivaled Kara or maybe still rivals them. But otherwise, you if you really let your allies do most of the work earlier, you should still have at least some manpower and you might be able to take care of Kara and one of their allies, or maybe two, depending on how many allies that other ally had. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Probably not. However, if you followed option two and try to expand into some other nations first before attacking Karako Yinlu. You usually also have a 15 year truce after your first war, however that truce will likely end after 1478 which is the thresh threshold for the achievement. So in that case you also have the option to either attack one of the allies of Kara with whom you only have a hopefully a short truce, so you can attack them early again. You might have to declare war against them without a Casus Belli, but could be just a necessary step. Unfortunately, makes you lose some stability and get some extra aggressive expansion, but that might be necessary. However, you could also just declare on Karakunian loot directly again after your war, or maybe one or two years later when you've regained some of your strength too, and maybe caught the provinces. However, that does give you a lot of aggressive expansion and some heavy stability hits. So this is probably only really feasible if you followed option two, because in this case it would be stronger than it would be if you had followed option one, because not only would you have gained some territory before your first war with Kara, but you would also take in most, if not all, of the territory of Kara for yourself, which is really good. And because it is really likely that you are not able to annex Kara Lu in only two wars, you might get lucky if they have some nationalist rebels, maybe from Iraq or Armenia or somewhere else that make a province either defect or create a new country on its own. But otherwise you are likely not be able to annex Kara in just two wars, which means you will definitely have to start another war while you have a truce. This is unfortunate because you get a lot of aggressive expansion in addition to the normal aggressive expansion that you would just get from taking the provinces. And you would also get some more stability hits, but at this point, if you already no CB them once, you're probably already sitting at minus three stability, so I guess you don't really lose that much, do you? <laughs> My advice would be that you stick to the Ottomans as an ally because they are stronger than the Mamluks. You could also ally maybe a Jam or one of the other bigger um, nations in Persia. Maybe someone from Arabia if you want to. Maybe even Crimea or someone. Just so you have some allies. Even if you don't use them against the war against Kara, they would just be a deterrent for her any coalition to form, which is really handy. So, is this achievement easy? Well, on its own it is fairly okay. However, first of all the time frame is really short, which makes you really need to hurry. And at least in my cases I had to truce break a couple of times. <laughs> I think two times. <laughs> um, and the other negative thing about this achievement it is if you um, follow my second option, it is really dependent on RNG and luck. And overall it's really dependent on your allies, which 
is usually not really that great for an achievement because in my opinion an achievement should be about um, the skill of a player on its own and not just about the efficiency of its AI allies so yeah but still it was uh, it was actually quite fun so yeah I I hope this actually helps some of you if you want to get this achievement maybe some of you already have this achievement I don't know so yeah feel free to tell me what to improve what you think could be done better and maybe even what achievement you want to see next so yeah Thank you and bye bye. Oh, wait, wh what? We only lost about 500 people and they lost more than 6,000. What? Do, do we. St no, we, did, we didn't stack web any of these. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I'll take it, but damn, that went way better than expected. Holy crap! Uh, yeah, we stack with this guy. Wow! <laughs> Holy crap! I lost a lot of people. Damn! Why did they? Do? <laughs> Jesus, the Ottomans are definitely not OP. I mean, I I didn't do shit for them, but <laughs> holy crap! Look at this ratio. Jesus Christ. <laughs>